with group work, I think there will always be an element of equity, um, and that's part of the learning, I suppose, for the students, is, is how do you negotiate and how do you achieve fairness um, in, in, within the group. Um, and you have to devolve, I guess, some trust to, this, to the students, but it's not a case of uh, you know, throwing an assignment over the wall and you know, opening the door uh, at the end of the assessment period and receiving it back. Usually there's going to be some kind of interaction or at the, at the very least I think there needs to be some assistance or guidance in terms of what their process might look like or tips and tools. Um, you know, we, we can't expect students just to absorb this from, from thin air. And there's a lot of knowledge out there, so it's, we're not having to start from scratch each time. And there's a lot of um, knowledge in, in, the, in the educational domain um, that is specific to individual disciplines, so things that are tried and tested there, and there's things that are actually quite generic. So, uh, like I say, we don't have to start from scratch each time. Picking up on a point that uh, Brent made earlier about uh, linking assessment to the, the learning outcomes, I think the, the key part of assessment is actually the design of the content of the group work, uh, because that is the means by which much of what can be assessed in, in group project is assessed. So the design of the actual task is absolutely crucial. And if I look, look at my own practice over the years, if I could go back 20 years, that's where I would invest most of my time to designing better group projects that are more aligned with what I actually want students to learn and what I want students to be able to do after they have completed it. Um, and then, as, as Brenton said, there's a, a myriad of different ways of, of assessing students. Um, there's some really interesting ones um, looking at the, the, the equity issue um, that, 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 that you raised. Um, um, for example, some interesting, is, uh, some interesting approaches involve making individual students responsible as manager, not as deliverer, but as manager of complex parts of the task. And they get an additional percentage of the grade for one part of a group project. Uh, again, that shows how important it is to design projects that enable those differentiations and those separate assessments. Um, peer evaluation within groups, between groups, um, if they're used, um, they often help address some of the issues because without peer evaluation, a lot of students feel that they don't have the means to manage performance within themselves, within their groups. Um, we give them a task, we say you're jointly responsible, but if we don't give them the means to manage that process and manage each other, we're really creating um, hugely stressful situations for students. Uh, very good students often worry about group projects because they feel that their own individual contributions will not be rewarded. Um, very um, insecure students often worry that they might not be able to perform well in the environment um, and assessment can be used to support many of these issues. Uh, so it's not just a question of how accurate is my assessment but also how much can I aid the learning process and the group process that the students experience. I think it's very important for us to, um, there's a word I, I would use often, is empathy. Um, and I think empathy is really important within the group um, for promoting effective group work. But it's very important for us as educators to have empathy with our students and to understand what their concerns and motivations are. Because um, as Brendan has alluded to, um, and Martin as well, actually within, within the group, uh, different kinds of students will have different motivations. Some will be anxious about their ability to perform in a group context for personality factors or other reasons and some will be anxious about whether or not their uh, grade might be compromised by the fact they feel that they're having to work with weaker students. Um, so understanding those motivations and then designing your, your work and your assessment and your communication process with the students can, can help allay a lot of these fears and in fact what you see when you get it right and it's not always easy but when you do get it right it's very rewarding for the students um, that they see it is possible to work in a group environment and they may have had neg negative experiences but if you think about it, almost all of us will have had a positive experience of working in a group in some context, whether it's in a sports or drama or music or even just a play group and when you're a small child. So, you know, we inherently know as humans that group work and group activity is not a bad thing, uh, but it's about trying to replicate the, the good aspects in the academic context and that behoves us as the curriculum designers to, uh, to think carefully about the, the people that we're trying to educate as well as what we're trying to impart in terms of knowledge. From a very pragmatic perspective, um, a lot of the issues around individual versus group grades arising from group projects uh, can be handled with peer evaluation. Um, and there's relatively simple approaches, there's a very, very comprehensive approaches. Um, I think if they generate feedback to students early, if 
collusion among students, but particularly ganging up against individual group members is uh, prevented. That's, those are important uh, management aspects of the process. But regardless of what choice is chosen, I think it is absolutely crucial um, in a module outline, for example, to reserve the right to, um, to assign individual grades, even if uh, groups are treated as self-responsible and they're graded with the same grade. Um, students find it very hard if they don't see an option of escalating substantive issues to the lecturer. Um, even the fact that this option is available often reduces um, within group conflict because uh, if students know that it's a black box and nobody will ever look into it, that gives rise to a lot of really difficult behaviours. So um, as, a, as a matter of course, regardless of what assessment approach I use in my module outline, I always reserve the right to assign differential individual grades um, should, should issues arise and, and evidence uh, be presented. I think that's really important that you, you keep that flexibility in there and um, often there's a temptation when we're assessing. Uh, we have a fear as, as educators or module coordinators or whatever that uh, we'll have a very tight uh, bunchy of marks in, in group projects and there's a certain inevitability about that because if you have a collective mark in a sense you're already averaging, it's an averaging process of a sort. Uh, and we need to be careful that we don't generate extra assessment that doesn't have pedagogical value in itself purely to provide differentiation. There are ways of differentiating within the group and Martin has alluded to some of them there and I think it's important we, we can preserve differentiation without maybe going for what in some senses we see as the easiest option which is adding extra assessment to students, particularly if that goes down the route uh, of extra workload for the students which we in turn are not fully uh, assessing or assessing in maybe the depth that we might ideally like to do so because then we have students doing uh, work on assessment which is not really being assessed and then there's no real benefit. One way in which uh, differential individual grading can be done with group projects is to assign a group grade but not put as much weight for the overall module grade to the group component but then assess um, in a flexible way, um, group relevant work in an exam. So all the students can bring examples from their own group work into a final exam. Um, and, and then of course, their engagement with the group work, their knowledge about that and their skill set that they've, that they've uh, developed in the group will influence the individual grade. Um, if students know this from the beginning, the group work becomes a means for them to prepare for the exam and that gives extra motivation but it also provides individualized uh, assessment that's very accurate in terms of their actual learning progress and achievements. So this isn't the first time in the history of the university that we've had to look at how we do assessment. Up until the 1800s all assessments were done orally in the public theatre in front square over a couple of days where people came in and they were essentially given a, an oral examination by their professors. So. We've done, a we've done a huge change in how we do assessment before, now it's time to relook really at it again and see how we can do assessment going forward.